Hi guys, I'm Mike and this is F1 Fanatics. Welcome back to the F1 Weekly News Show and it has been a while. Obviously we had the Christmas and New Year involved where we had kind of lots of videos out uh, over that period. So the F1 Weekly News Show was kind of passed on for a while, but we are now back. And obviously the F1 Weekly News Show usually came out on a Friday, but for the close season, I think it's gonna come out on a Monday as we will turn Fridays into Feeder Fridays uh, with obviously our extended coverage of the Junior Formula. Um, guys, don't forget if you are new around here, you can subscribe to the channel, click that bell notification and you can watch more videos just like this. But for today's video in the F1 Weekly News Roundup, what we're going to do is look at all the stories, well, the major stories for me over the festive season. So then we're kind of all up to date. And so the first story that we're going to go into is regards to Charles Leclerc. He obviously signed his uh, contract extension, a five-year deal that keeps him at Ferrari till 2025. I assume, obviously, on top of his uh, contract he already had for 2020, um, he's now going to obviously go on and uh, stay with the Tifosi uh, until 2024. So that, for me, pretty much puts a nail in Sebastian Vettel's Ferrari coffin. And I believe it probably means that it will be his last year um, at Ferrari. As to me, this is a very clear statement that Ferrari is saying the f future is Charles Leclerc. So now, obviously, with the faith behind Charles Leclerc at Ferrari, it is going to be interesting to deliver um, what he can do in that Ferrari in this five year spell. Do you guys think that he can secure a world championship within that time? It's gonna be fascinating to see how it all plays out. Story two of the day is the other kind of real big news uh, in terms of signings uh, over the festive period that we had. Actually, I believe it came out on New Year's Day. So uh, really starting off with an intention there. And that is of course the story that Robert Kibitza um, has been signed as Alpha's uh, reserve driver, which means obviously he will be involved in the development of the car. Two very experienced drivers on their roster then, obviously with uh, Robert Kubica, Kimi Raikkonen, and then we knew that Antonio Giovinazzi had retained his seat for the 2020 season as well. Um, really interesting move. I, I think probably it still means that um, Robert Kubitz's F1 career in terms of competitive racing is still over but you know if Kimi Raikkonen decides to retire or move on in 2021 um, and he impresses in his reserve driver role and they want to give him a shot it would be an interesting uh, thing to kind of see Robert Kubitza in a car that's competitive within the midfield and what he could actually do uh, within that. So yeah, very interesting on this one. And not only because what Robert Kubica brings with him is it's now Alfa Romeo uh, Orlen Racing. So he brings the uh, Polish oil brand of Orlen with him. And yeah, that is very interesting indeed because obviously one of the big rumoured teams that he was with uh, was Haas to do this exact role of reserve driver and I believe that Haas were probably counting on Orlen coming in and being their next title sponsor so financially this may have implications for Haas that Kubica uh, I would assume he would be the one choosing because um, he was highly sought after uh, between Haas, uh, Alfa Romeo and I believe Racing Point as well were also interested in him. So it's going to be interesting to see um, where Haas now find the money. I'm not sure, they wouldn't have counted on this money, obviously, but I think they certainly would have been hoping uh, for this sponsor to fill the gap that the rich energy cash has left. Sticking with Alfa Romeo, uh, we look at Giovinazzi and the new story that, you know, after his uh, crashing out on the final lap, uh, lap at Spa, after having a very good race and obviously losing a good position. I believe he was running P7 at the time. 
uh, from memory, but he was certainly running in the points. It was a big kind of thing that Frank Fraser said could have defined his career and could have ended his career in F1. But obviously with his home Grand Prix, Alpha's home Grand Prix, being in the press conference the following week, dealing with all that pressure and going on and getting a career best finish of ninth at that point, obviously finished fifth in Brazil later in the year. Um, it was really, you know, a stand up or lose your seat situation. And it shows that Antonio Giovinazzi really did earn his shot um, at staying in that Alfa Romeo seat in 2020. So that was mightily impressive for him. We go back to Ferrari, so we're gonna get all the Italians out the way first. Um, uh, the comments that Ferrari have made about Mick Schumacher and that he has the potential uh, to be a future Ferrari uh, driver is what they said. They're impressed by his talent and interesting to see how he develops. But I think this comes as no surprise uh, to anyone that obviously Mick Schumacher, he has the Schumacher name. The Schumacher name, thanks to his dad, Michael, will always forever be linked to Ferrari. Obviously, um, had uh, Mick Schumacher had a learning year in Formula 2 last year. It's going to be really interesting to see how he kicks on and develops this year. He does usually take a year to kind of learn and get used to the car before kicking on and making a step up in that formula. So yes, it's going to be interesting to see how that unfolds, but it's no surprise for me to see Ferrari making links between themselves and Mick, obviously part of their Ferrari Academy, because if anything, if nothing else, it is an absolutely huge um, financial and PR move that they could make to link the two together. We've moved away from the Italians now, and now we go to British team of McLaren. And McLaren have come out and made a statement that in 2021, obviously those budget caps come in at 175 million. Well, yes, so you probably won't see the effects uh, really on track until 22, 2023. But McLaren have said they are going to be operating at the absolute maximum of that budget. And that really comes as no real surprise to me. McLaren are always an outfit who have invested a lot of money within Formula One. They can't compete financially currently with Mercedes and Ferrari, but with that budget cap in, they are certainly a team who could definitely compete with that 175 million budget. And to round off the weekly news for this week, we're gonna focus on Red Bull uh, and Honda as well. So Honda earlier in uh, the period came out and said that, um, that because they've improved the reliability of the Honda engine, it has allowed them to make greater performance gains this year because, you know, it's, it's pretty good. The reliability is the foundation that you can build from. Uh, once you've got that reliability, you can focus all your energy into the performance element because you know that the engine is going to consistently work, so you can try new things from there. And obviously Red Bull have benefited from that this season and they've openly come out and said, that their trust relationship has been made uh, a lot stronger this year as Honda continue to meet targets and always a sly little dig at Renault like Renault didn't meet their targets that they wanted. And now switching over to Red Bull themselves as the final story, Max Verstappen, uh, obviously we did an F1 Worldwide podcast on this, the first one that we did with me and Mark chatting about, but Max Verstappen believes that the platform and foundations that they've made in 2019 believes that they have a genuine shot at the title. And this would be an interesting one. Obviously, as an F1 fan, I would love that to be true because I think having two constructors fight at the top means competitive, more kind of contested race wins, and it makes it interesting, more on-track battles. Whether they can actually back up these words uh, from talking positively is another thing. Um, but yes, certainly one that we kind of fingers crossed hope it does play out because yeah, to see a Max versus Lewis Hamilton title fight throughout the 2020 season uh, would be absolutely incredible and something that I would just absolutely love to see. But there you go guys, there for me were the main stories uh, that we saw over the festive season. If you had any other stories 
uh, related to F1 that you think I missed over the festive season want to discuss, don't forget you can always leave them in the comments and obviously in the comments as well, comment on the stories that we had today. Um, what do you make of uh, Leclerc's five year contract? Are you excited to see him at Ferrari for five more years? What can he achieve in that time uh, with Ferrari? Uh, Alfa Romeo's move to Robert Kubica, do you think it's a good move uh, for Alfa Romeo? What do you think of the repercussions for Haas F1? Mick Schumacher, what do you think? Do you think he one day will be a Ferrari driver? It's going to be fascinating to see how that one plays out. And then, obviously, do you think Red Bull will be title contenders um, with, obviously, what Honda talk about, having that reliability, so all their focus is on performance and Max Verstappen believing that Red Bull, the team themselves, have a very good foundation to mount a title challenge. But that's it being it for today, guys. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Like I said earlier in the video, if you are new around here, we'd love you to click that subscribe button uh, and also smash that bell notification so you can keep up to date with all our latest content just like this one. But for now, UF1 fans, keep racing.